called ha victory in the heavens ha there's a party going on in the heavens ha because what the god the lord is doing right now wow it's greater than what we can think or imagine thank you lord for being part of your work thank you lord for being part of your work have your way have your will give us this world this morning this word that will renew us this word that will anoint us. This word that will make us see the sign and wonders. Oh God. This word that will change us. We are a new creation in God. Thank you Lord for making us a new creation. Oh God. The old has passed. Your will is being done. Thank you Jesus Christ. So Father Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Ha. We give you all, we shout your name, your glorious name, O Lord. We celebrate you. Hallowed be your name, O Lord. I know each of us, as we step in your house, in your tabernacle this morning, as we go back to our activities, we will be made new in Christ and testify about you. To our family, to our friends, to even people we don't know. Let your name be heard and bring healing in the nation and bring deliverance in the nation and bring comfort in the nation. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you're about to do. We commit this service upon your hands. It is not our service, it is your service. Do as you please, oh God, this morning. In Jesus' name, we have given praise. Amen. You may be seated. Today's Bible reading is taking place from John 4, verse 20. John chapter 4, verse 20. John chapter 4, John chapter 4, verse 20. And it says, Our fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will need neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Amen. I want to thank God for my family. Um, this week, my mom wasn't feeling so good, and it was like, this week has been my, my busiest week, so I didn't have time to just, like I was kept telling her, I was like, I have to like study for this, I have to do that. But like um, in the middle of the week, God was just like, calm down, like everything will work out, just focus. And so I spent time with her and my sister like every other day, at least for an hour. And I wanna thank God that um, the last day we talked, she was like really in pain. And like, I wasn't scared, but I was just like, okay, like, you have to believe in everything. We prayed a couple hours later, she was completely fine. So I wanna thank God for that. And also for my sister, cause I see her growth in Christ and it's really beautiful. Yeah, so.
Chapter 8, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 19. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. Also, I'm going to be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 8. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 8. Luke, chapter 4, verse 8. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And so, whosoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you dimensions of relationship with God. Mighty God of heaven this morning, I have come over here as your oracle to deliver your own desire to your children this morning. I want you, Lord God Almighty, to simply use me this morning as a vessel that you cherish, that you are going to bless as you are blessing your children, so that all of us are going to be blessed together. Speak your word deep down from the bottom of your heart, through my heart, to your children. Let your throne be established. Let your temple be built in your world today. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost explain itself to his children as this world is proceeding from this altar. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we've declared. Have your seat confidently. Dimensions of relationship with God. And the key word in this uh, simple statement, this topical statement, is relationship. 
All right. What is relationship? Relationship. From the literary dictionary, relationship is the state of being connected. Mark the word connected. It is the way in which two or more people or groups regard and behave towards each other. All right? Connected regard and behave towards each other pay attention to that so now if the literary meaning is that what i've said then can we connect that to this topic it will mean dimension of relationship with god is then the dimension of our regard and behavior towards god okay and at the same time god also regarding us and behavior towards us the dimension of we regarding god and behaving towards god and the dimension of which god regard us and behave towards us in two ways all right or it is the state of being connected to god okay or god himself connected to us not only that we just connecting to god but God also is connected to us. So two ways. Relationships in two ways. Again, it's about the connection between two people. The regard and behavior towards each other. Hallelujah. There are dimensions in the scripture. When I search the scripture, I found out some things I'm going to be saying today. Which is going to help your faith. Help your growth. Because many of us uh, might have situation where we talk about we are not being fulfilled. We don't know whether we are going to make heaven. We don't know whether we are sons of God. Uh, we can't really feel whether we belong. Some of us might even be thinking, will I be able to make heaven? Will uh, heaven be my portion? How do I know that really, if Christ really comes today, right at this hour, I'm able to go with Christ? So, it is very important as a young Christian to really get this clear as early as possible. So that, but, but as soon you are, so that as you are growing up as a child of God, no wind of doctrine will blow your feet off. Because there are a lot of doctrines around the place that is kind of destabilizing people and changes people's focus and getting them reoriented such that they themselves are put in, in, so into misconstruction. So when this is well understood, misconstruction on your part as a young Christian as growing up, we flee. Hallelujah. So the purpose of this message today is to clarify what stand you are in as a child of God. Praise the Lord. Now, the dimension of relationship with God. Dimension of relationship with our God. And what are these dimensions? I've listed about four here, and this is one I saw in the scripture, and that is connected to every other area. And I want to take your time and pay attention to this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This has been born out of revelation, that has been born out of personal relationship with God, and from the scripture, all interwoven together, bringing this work. Get ready. Because the Spirit of God is about to let you know what has been confusing over years hallelujah praise the lord are you ready for the holy ghost to reveal things to you today all right number one worship dimension number one is worship now what does worship do what does it do now we know that worship exalts god and when you say you are exalting god it establishes the authority of god the supremacy of God over us and over creation. So when we worship, we are actually exalting God, thereby establishing his supremacy and dependency, our dependency on him. Hallelujah. Now, why is this issue of worship in relationship? Hallelujah. Why, why is God craving for worship? In relationship why so let's look at it thoroughly now we see that god himself is spirit 
Hallelujah. God is a spirit. The Bible makes us understand because God is spirit. So, in relationship with them, it requires that we acknowledge that he's a superior man over us. Hallelujah. It's not a man. So God is not a man. God is a spirit. And number two, under the worship, is that God seeks worshiper. Hallelujah. God seeks worshiper. Right from the beginning of age, God has delighted himself in having creatures point back to him as their, their creator. Okay? Uh, you shall serve the Lord your, or your God and him alone you shall worship. Now look at it. Book of John chapter 4 verse 23 to 24. John chapter 4 verse 23 and 24. So God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. Alright? And if you look at the previous verse, it said, the Lord seeks for worshiper. Who must worship him what? In the spirit and the truth. So, the essence of God creating us as human beings is for us to stand for him as a praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to establish that also because we are created for his glory. In the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7 says, even everyone that is called by my name for i have created him for my glory i have formed him yea i made him hallelujah so when god made us what he essentially doing is that he so he created himself hallelujah that so we are made in his own image all right so that means our creation establishes god's beauty amen so our creation establishes God's properties. Amen. Our creation should therefore exalt God. Hallelujah. Our creation should therefore worship God. Because God created us so that he can replicate his beauty into the world. And he's expecting that that beauty needs to be shown to him back. Hallelujah. By our exalting his name. By worshiping him. Hallelujah. Now, what is the reason why God is saying we should worship him? The dimension of fellowship with God. Worship. What is the third reason? Alright? The other reason is God save us. Right? For this purpose. Amen? If we are born again, we are born again because God wants us to be a new creature that we worship him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because he knew that as soon as the Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they shifted their worship, their dependency away from God to themselves. Hallelujah. They begin to trust in the flesh. So God wants that trust to go back to him. And that is why he brought Jesus to the whole world to die for us and resurrected. And he consigned us back to God so that that worship will go back to him. And that's why I seek for worship. So you can imagine... The essence of this whole thing that we are doing here, coming to worship God every Sunday and personal relationship, is all about worship of God. Can you imagine that? That's how serious God takes his worship. So I kind of imagine how people will stay back at home and will not be connected on Sundays like this and in their private time also to worship God. It's like not worshiping God looks like a sin. Amen. Praise God. Neglect, total neglect for God might represent an acceptance of another God. Praise the Lord. Now look at the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 12. Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God. In, on this mountain. Look at it. It said the people of Israel free from the land of bondage of the Egyptians. What was the purpose? For worship. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? We are all being born by Christ in the spirit by God through Christ. Simply because of what reason? Fellowship of worshiping God. Wow. It's amazing. 
So the whole Israel was saved from Egypt because God really wanted them to himself to worship him. It's amazing. It's amazing. So it means that a life that we are living in this world has no relevance in the absence of worship of God. The life that we are living in this world has nothing. It has no meaning. It has nothing to do with true sense of reality. We cannot just stay in this world like a vacuum. Okay? That makes no impact in the environment. So to make impact in the environment is to have God to be the one, the ultimate, the only one to worship. So the dimension of fellowship with God, number one, is worship. I'm going to emphasize again in the book of Exodus chapter 7 verse 16. Now, God himself was emphasizing to the Pharaoh. The stubborn Pharaoh who wouldn't allow the people of Israel to get out of bondage. God was over and over again. We can see that in Exodus chapter 8 verse 1, Exodus chapter 8 verse 20, Exodus chapter 9 verse 1, Exodus chapter 9 verse 13, Exodus chapter 10 verse 3, Exodus chapter 10 verse 7. God was repeating through his servant Moses. All right? And look at the book of Exodus as he repeats also in the book of Exodus chapter 7 verse 16. What does, what does God say? Then say to him, The Lord, well, who is he saying it to? Saying to Pharaoh, The Lord, the God of Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go so that they may worship him in the wilderness. But until now, you have not listened. That's how God is passionate. Anyone that wants to stop you from worshiping God is actually your enemy. Let me tell you one thing. In this midst of pandemic concern, do you know one thing that God cherishes most right now? Is the worship of God. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. I kind of imagine, I'm sorry to say I'm not a political figure here. I'm a servant of the Most High God. And I have to speak by the utterance it gives to me. Any kind of gathering right now or place or locality that despises because you cannot use what can solve problem to solve problem all right you can't use what cannot solve problem to solve problem so what you must use to solve problem must be something greater that can offer that can provide solution to that problem so if god took his time to explain clearly to pharaoh that look all this war of men trying to plague your community it's all about the people of israel gathering to me somewhere looking at my face and worshiping me if god could get, go to that extent of plaguing the entire egyptians i'm telling you that god is angry at coronavirus hallelujah very very angry all right and for the attitude we might actually put towards coronavirus too my anger god if we see coronavirus as another god that need to be preferably served to serving god that my hunger god that will look like egyptian and that's why i command today anyone that is watching on this line and you have been locked down in your house with a coronavirus inf infliction i decree be free in the name of jesus christ there's no way God will ever allow you to worship another God beside him. But your heart must be cling unto him. Your heart, our heart, must be accepting what he is accepting. God says, I make you born again. I have I brought you here in the food of the congregation of, me, of my people just for one thing, for you to worship me. So it will be a disaster. For any society, for any community to relegate the presence of God in this situation. We can, we can worship God via online like we are doing right now. Also physical contact here with the social distancing being observed. There are many ways where we can worship God. But when we decide to stay away from worshiping God and sit down and take an excuse because of coronavirus, that even angers God more. Hallelujah. 
If you want this coronavirus to disappear quickly, we're going to lift up our voice in worship of God. Hallelujah. So the essence of this whole thing is about worshiping God. About worshiping God. Hallelujah. Number two dimension. Number two dimension. Number two dimension. Remember. 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 God hates memorylessness. God does not delight in memorylessness. When the Lord God Almighty took the people of Israel from Egypt, he asked them to go to a path and then lead them to a promised land. At the point, the people of Israel were complaining and grumbling. And they were afraid of the enemy rather than being afraid of the God who gave them promise. Some of them had to be complaining to Moses. Now look, when we were in Egypt under the control of Pharaoh, we were enjoying, even though it was in hardship, we were able to eat meat. And then when they got to the wilderness, they started complaining and say, oh, we only ate manna. They didn't even remember how the manna came to be. The manna came from heaven. They can't produce anything. They can't eat anything. They can't cook anything. They don't have stove. They don't have wood to cook. But food are being provided by God. I don't, how was the food being provided? God opened the heavens. Manna came down from heaven and fell into the camp. And all the people of God were fed with manna. After they have eaten the manna, they started complaining again. All right? A few brothers of Egypt to kill us. We've been eating manna all this while. Only one type of food. Can you just help us? We need meat. All right? And God was very hungry. You know, why, was God, you know why, why God was very angry? God was very angry because they forgot the benefits of God. They forgot how the manna came from heaven. And they were crying for meat. And God got angry. What did God do? God provided the meat. You know what? The meat, what? They were eating the meat and the meat was coming out of their nose. Hallelujah. That's how God was so generous to them. More than exceedingly above their expectation. And the meat was coming out of their nose. Hallelujah. You see, when we are forgetful, in God's benefit, we are not a true. Uh, we are not in true relationship with God. When we forget God's first benefit. We are not in true relationship with God. Those who are in relationship with God not only worship God, but they are people who take account and remembers. Everybody say remember. They have memory, memory of what God has done for them. All right. They have the memory of God's vision, right? They have the memory of what God has said to them in their dream. They have the memory of what God told them. God doesn't like to waste his energy. Everybody say, God does not like to waste his resources. When, you, when a man allows God to waste his resources, God can be very angry at that. God takes record. God is a God of record. He said, I trust my servant Abraham, for I've chosen him. That they will write all these things down and teach his children. Hallelujah. What is the purpose? The purpose is for Abraham not to forget. In transferring the virtues of God, the word of God, God spoke to him to his children. God is not a God of memorylessness. God is a God of remembrance. So to have relationship with God is to not only worship him, but also to remember is benefit. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision. Everybody say, write down the vision. Look at what God is saying. Make it plain on tablets. Clear written. I kind of wonder today why we have a generation that won't care about writing things down about the revelation of God to them. If you say, Open your, 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 your private uh, library. Look at the old thing. We don't see any line of what God has said ever in their life. And they're already 30 years old. And they are Christians. 
Hallelujah. I do not so when people complain that they can't hear the voice of God. Why would they want to hear the voice of God? Because God only regards those who regard Him. Hallelujah. The reason why we are having a backfire is because we put a neglect to remembering the benefit of God. Remembering. See, relating with God is very simple. It's a simple mathematical calculation. Okay? A simple mathematical calculation here. I mean, it's a mathematical calculation. That's what I'm telling you right now. Right here. Worship. Number two, remember. When God sees us, I will remember every detail of what He tells us. You know, some people in their dream, God will reveal something to them, and it's just, oh, it's just one of such dreams. It's a multitude of thinking. That's why I, you know, multitude of uh, experience with things. That's why I have that dream. They just, they just shake that dream. They, they shake it actually. And they shake the dream. It, it's not important. And they are forgotten that dream is very expensive. Amen. To have a good dream. Everybody say to have a good dream. It's very expensive. Open your mouth and tell me about To have a good dream. It's very expensive. Very expensive. Just, just have understood what dream is all about. You know how expensive a dream is. God sometimes he reveals things to us. But we call we neglect. We don't take record of what he reveals. And so God sometimes might get provoked and decide not to leave him more. And he can decide to withdraw a bit until we are able to recognize that it's in the midst of our life. It's in the midst of our situation. It's the essence of our living. So, to relate with God is to remember. Hallelujah. I'm still on Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. That he may run who, re who receives. Right? He may run who receives. For the vision is here for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. And if it did not lie, to it tarries. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So God is an addict of memory. Amen. <laughs> an addict of remembrance. God is indebted to exuberance of his virtues. It's not a waster. Hallelujah. If you have an encounter or testimony, keep your testimony. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. A man who stands on your way and wants to, want to forget your testimony is your enemy. The enemy a man can have in love and life, the man who shut you down and shut your testimony down. That's your enemy. Very easy to know enemy. Hallelujah. And you have to report them to God quickly. As Moses and people of Israel, they cried unto God and reported Pharaoh unto God. And God said, I heard their cry of my people. Hallelujah. So anyone want to stop you from remembering? You are trying to share your testimony with people and they are shutting you down. You know for sure that's the devil at, at work. You must write to that challenge and speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. You cannot shut yourself down. However small your testimony is, be loud as celebrating it. Amen. You know what he does to God? He exhorts God. Amen. He gets God excited. I'm telling you, your testimony gets God excited. Everybody say, get God excited. Today I want to strengthen you. I want to tell you, rise up from your, from your imagination and thought that is not correlating with God's worship i was not corresponding with remembering what god has told you and start taking a new dimension from today you need to stop the thinking and engage worship stop the thinking and engage memory remembrance of god what god has done in your life hallelujah god loves that we remember things not only the vision he gives to us he also wants us to remember his words want us to remember his words Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 God says This book of the law shall not depart Out of your mouth But you shall meditate During day and night That you may observe To do according to All that is written therein For then You shall make your way Prosperous and you shall have Success Good, Not just success but good success. Hallelujah. 
God love that is lies of war be kept intact. Be remembered. Hallelujah. And how do we study the word of God? We study the word of God for remembrance, not with our brain, with our heart. And David said, the word have I kept in my heart that I might not sin against you. All right? Not keep in my brain. Hallelujah. You keep the word of God in your heart. You memorize from your heart, not from the brain. Anything memorized from the brain sometimes can disappear quickly. Hallelujah. But when you memorize God's word with your heart, it stays there forever. And that's the secret of my own life, personal living. I memorize, I actually eat God's word. Amen. I eat God's words. Amen. So that it will stay in my heart forever. Hallelujah. When I take a lie, when I feel being filled, I, I, don't, I don't keep reading the Bible. I stop at that moment. Hallelujah. Sorry for making myself an example. I stop at that moment. I make sure I receive as much revelation I can receive for that line. I will not leave that line until that fullness of revelation is received. When I got the revelation that I move ahead, I keep reading. See, a, a time has come where we have to treat the word of God as a balm of Gilead. Amen. Hallelujah. Healing. Revelatory. Word of God cannot be treated as one of such novels secular novel that we read just for the reading's sake the word of god has to be treated as medicina medicine to our heart is a healing power to our heart god wants his word to be kept in memory hallelujah hallelujah deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 8 Genesis chapter 27 verse 8. It says, And you shall write every, I mean, write very plainly on the stones all the works of the law. See? All the word of the law need to be written down. So God, when we talk about relationship with God, we'll talk about keeping memory of encounter with God. Hallelujah. Number three. There are four of them. I mean, my midway right now, we have two more left. Hallelujah. Walk. Number three, walk. You worship God. You remember his encounter with you. You encounter with him. And then you walk. What is the meaning of that walk there? Okay, let, me, let me just make a, a clear Bible reference. So that you can get it clearly. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. So God wants us to walk. Every step we are taking in life has to be a walk. Step of faith. So God does not want us to do anything that is outside walking in faith. Hallelujah. What, what a wonderful relationship. God wants us to worship him. God wants us to remember encounter we have with him. And he had with us, put it in writing our visions, revelation, our testimonies. God also wants us to walk, okay? Walk in line with those revelations. Walk in line. It means that when we have encounter of the future that seems to be terrifying, we can actually, by memory, we can remind God of what he did in the past to, to help us confront the challenge of the future. So God is not wasting his time creating the testimony of the past for, for non-use purpose. He does not waste his time to just create the testimony of the past so that it can be wasted. He wants the testimony of the past to be referred to and called into being during the future challenge or present challenge. And he said, God that helped me to overcome the bear. As David said in the wilderness when he was taking care of the sheep. God that helped me to overcome the bear, the fiery bear. He is also able to help me to overcome Goliath. And that was the victory of David. And we are told clearly in the scripture that David is a man after God's heart. Why? Because he's a man of memory. And he said, in the book of Psalm, he said, see, he said, forget not his benefit. 
Hallelujah. Look at the book of Psalm 103, verse 2. Psalm 103, verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his what? All his benefits. That's David for you. A man who wouldn't forget any encounter he has with God. Hallelujah. That was the source of victory of David. He said, the God who helped me out to overcome the bear will help me to overcome this man. And God used the stone that this man launched. Just a stone. One wonders how small stone went through the flink and get into the forehead of Goliath leading to his death. Imagine. Wow. See, when we are focused in worshiping God in relationship, remembering what he has done, and then walking in line by faith with what we have done. You know what happened to us? Our weapon of warfare becomes sharpened. Amen. Hallelujah. That's our victory and testimony already. Praise the Lord. We are able to overcome something. That's some victory that you get without even fighting the victory. Amen. Some victory you get because God will reckon with your relationship rather than reckon with you being afraid of your enemy. You know, it will take the fear of enemy out of you because it will set to you and put you put in you peace. Some of us today are not having peace because we have not been able to do our due diligence in our relationship with God. So we become afraid. Bible said the wicked flee when no man pursues. See, fear can come ordinarily when there is no fear. Because relationship is have issues. So therefore, it become, the environment becomes a terror. Even an ordinary shadow of your body may start terrorizing you. You might sleep in the house and start getting afraid for nothing. But when you are in relationship with God, you remember God's goodness. You worship God time to time. You walk in the spirit. It is impossible. For the challenges of the now to overcome you. Lastly. Amen. Lastly. Serve. Amen. Everybody say serve. Serve. James chapter 2 verse 14. James chapter 2 verse 14. So what does it profit my brethren? If someone says he's as faith. But does not have works. Okay. Relationship with God is not only worship. It's not only remembering. God's things, the vision. It's not only remembering the testimonies. It's not only remembering the encounter. It's not only remembering the leadership of God who took you out of trouble. But also walking in line with all those testimonies, with what is said to you in faith, walking in the spirit, in the spirit of what is said. Not only walking. But also serving. Everybody say serving. You know, people today you were just sitting down in their home and they say, oh, it's enough for me to just watch TV. I'm serving God, I'm a Christian. My friend, that is not reckoned with by God. Hallelujah. God wants us to walk. Okay. How can we walk? We've got to see people. Everybody say, I've got to see people. You have to go out of your way and bless people. And bless life. And bless souls. And touch people. The gift of God is meant to profit with all. Right? It's not gambling. The gift of God of some people are given the gift of governing. Some people are given the gift of help. Not only speaking in tongue and uh, laying hand on the sick. We are told Jesus Jesus Christ went about doing good. All right, healing all manner of disease and what and sickness. He was doing good. That's doing. Everybody say doing. Christianity that has relationship with God has to reckon with doing, doing, doing. The purpose of having the spirit of God is to manifest the spirit of God. Amen. All right. That's what Paul said. All right. Okay. To manifest the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the purpose of the gospel. To manifest the Holy Spirit. How do you manifest the Holy Spirit? You show love to people. You help people. You go out of your way and bless people and bless life. This is the work. James chapter 2, verse 20, 20 to 23. James 2, 20 to 23. So what is it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith, but does not have work, can faith save him? Right? Can he save him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not enough to only work, but we also need to be committed to serve. Amen. In our giving, not only money, giving in kind, not only in cash, 
Because today people are going around preaching around doctrine, talking about the overall essence of Christianity is just give money. That's not what it is. Amen. It's more than that. Hallelujah. <laughs> you have praised the Lord. Rise upon your feet today. Not just give money. You give yourself to God. Amen. God speaks to you. Bless that person. You go ahead and bless. Not only bless through money, you can bless by giving up yourself to support. Hallelujah. Rise upon your feet. Amen. I want us to pray today. See, four dimensions of relationship. When you have this established in your life, you know for sure heaven is certain. Amen. But when we have any one of these one missing, that is a concern. Hallelujah. I'm going to repeat myself again. Worship of God. Number two, remember. Number three, work. Number five. What's number five? Serve with all your heart. He said, with Lord, with, you shall serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might. I want us to decree today, Father. Father, make me alive again in fellowship with you. Make me alive again in fellowship with you. Open your mouth and be clear right now. Make me alive again right now in fellowship with you. I want to worship you, devote my entirety to you. Devote my entirety to you and know how to remember your encounter with me and my encounter with you. Help me, oh Lord, to confront my future with the testimony that I have in the past. Help me, oh Lord, to walk in love, in faith, in the spirit, listening to what your spirit is telling me to do and walking in accordance with your word. Help me, O oh Lord, to be committed to serving you in the name of Jesus. To give all my best into commitment towards your work. Commitment towards your vineyard. I have spoken your word today, I pray. Everyone who stand here today, let them receive another new dimension of relationship with God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. And you are here, there right now watching me on this line and you say i really need to get closer to god i want to say after me lord father you've spoken to me today i'm ready within my heart to follow you father where i've disappointed you in my walk where I've misconstrued what relationship is all about. Today, Father, have mercy on me. Restore me back to relationship with you again. I want to know you more. I want to understand what worship is. I want to know you better. I want to be able to remember all your goodness. I want to be accounted for all details of our relationship. I want to be a man who can remember things. I want to be able to walk in accordance with your words in the spirit of yours. I want to be able to serve you with all I have, with all my mind, with all my substance. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. So, Lord God Almighty, this morning, I thank you for giving this word. No man obtains anything except is given to by you as you have allow your word to proceed today as a special blessing unto us. I pray this word shall build a complete giant tree into our life, fruiting, fruiting to eternity. Equipping your church ready to the day of your coming. We will not be lost away from relationship with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we will declare. Oh, oh, oh.